This is a regular old Unix terminal. Psych, it's a warp dev terminal, and if you haven't heard about it, you suck. Just kidding. But today we're going to find out if this ChatGPT powered terminal really is the one CLI to rule them all. I'm scared. So to put this thing through its paces, we're going to run one of the most complex tasks in all of computer science, real-time video object detection. And to do this, we're going to use Google's Coral AI Edge TPU, which is a piece of hardware designed to do only two things. Look cool and run machine learning algorithms. And we're going to program it with our warp terminal. Let's get it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is boot up our computer and install warp. Just kidding, I'm a Mac user. You probably heard about Warp through social media, but it's definitely worth taking for a spin. And this Rust-based terminal supports ZSH, Fish, and Bash. And this next generation terminal has been a complete game changer for me. It's basically a new blazing fast terminal built by some ex-Googlers that takes the command line to the next level. And it is scary good. And before we get into it, we need to get a brief history of the command line. See, it all began with DOS which is why we're all way overdue for a little bit of innovation and an upgrade. One of the things I love about Warp is the autocomplete. It's one of those things that once you start using it, you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. And Warp actually utilizes the same autocomplete spec as fig.io, so you end up with the same result. It's like IntelliSense. So I don't know about you, but I rely heavily on the up arrow to traverse my history. But you're always looking for that right index and with warp, you actually get a full list that you can audit here, and when you find the command of interest, you just select it. Makes it a lot easier. So the input prompt with warp is a lot more sophisticated than most terminals in the way that you can have multiple lines. So we can say uh, curlgoogle.com, but after executing that, we can say then curl reddit.com. Right, so we can do multiple commands, and we can also place the cursor wherever we want, which makes things a little bit easier. And as you can see, each command is separated semantically into its own block, which can then be analyzed, bookmarked, or shared. And this just helps organize our different commands. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's set up our Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is up and running. So I'm going to do ping raspberry pi dot local. And notice how warp finishes my commands for me, which is really, really nice. So I can go ahead and terminate that. It looks like the uh, Raspberry Pi is available on our Wi Fi network. So let's go ahead and SSH over into it. So I'm going to do SSH and again finishes my command for me. I'm going to supply the password and we should be in our Raspberry Pi. And notice how when I run CD, it automatically prints out the direct children of the current working directory. So instead of typing desktop, I could just select it. True to its name, Warp is faster than iTerm and the Mac OS terminal app. But don't trust me, I actually ran some independent benchmarks to see how it compared with my Mac OS terminal. And so I downloaded the benchmarking scripts and ran those files on both Warp and my native Mac OS terminal. Weird stuff started to happen, I'm pretty sure the CCP hacked me. Man, those guys are good. But finally, I got my results. And you can see Warp is way faster than my native macOS terminal, which is really counterintuitive. Sorry, macOS terminal, we had a good run. And all that saved time is really gonna free me up to do some impactful work. But there's a problem, GPT. Generative AI is gonna change the way we work and it has natural applications for tools like command line terminals. Warp has integrated AI in two primary ways that will turbocharge how you interact with machines. First is the AI command search. So if I wanna issue an action but I don't know the exact syntax, I can compose my command in natural language and let the generative model translate it into the proper command.
And this is just gold because I don't have to leave the terminal, so I don't have to waste my time trifling with the flags or arguments and the sequence of the command. It's all right there for me. This allows you to perfectly craft your commands in the blink of an eye, or should I say in the blink of an AI. Auto-correcting your commands is really impressive, but Warp took things to the next level by bringing ChatGPT to the party and baking it directly into their product. This AI panel lets you go even deeper with more heady, abstract coding concepts and steers you in the right direction. Let's use it to guide our objective of video object recognition. So I can go over to this tab here and pose my question. How do I install a GitHub repo called PyCoral from Google Coral. And it actually gives me the command right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click this button here, which will place the command over here, and then we're gonna run it. And now I can see my GitHub repo. Thanks, ChatGPT. This use case of AI feels really natural and proves that shells can be smart. But will Warp be able to help us complete our objective of real-time video object recognition? Let's find out. Now I'm gonna download the models using Bash. I know some folks are a little sensitive to security, so keep in mind that you can go to settings, and if you go to privacy, you're able to turn off the telemetry data. Another thing I like about Warp is the live block search. So if I were to execute a process that updates in real time, such as HTOP, I can actually search through this. So for instance, if I wanna see which processes are hogging all the resources, I can just do Command F and start looking for keywords of interest. And so now I can search through this block of live output. I can even get crazy and use regex. You can even toggle the settings so that the commands are at the top and everything's upside down like you're in Stranger Things. Get it? Because the protagonist from Stranger Things came from a parallel universe called the Upside Down. Now I'm going to install the requirements. And now for the moment of truth, we are going to run our classification inference program. So we're going to run Python 3 classify capture.py. All right, and the final test is I'm going to see if it can classify my guitar here. Yep, electric guitar, 75%. Let's see, it's working. So if you're ready to stop messing around with endless stack overflow threads and trying to look like you're the hacker from Mr. Robot, then go to warp.dev and give this product a spin. Happy coding.